Hey, hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to Extreme Bronco Live. Look who is back with us tonight. Hello. Mr. Gavin, you've been gone for, what, two weeks? Mm. I mean, not literally gone from here, but from the show for two weeks. Yeah. Have you had fun? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. So, Hanging out with friends all day. Yeah, today and yesterday, um, I had a sleepover with my friend in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then for some of the week, um, me and my other friend um, that lives in, somewhere ar around here, um, we went fishing and for two days. And then we went to the um, and then we went to the pool after fishing. Then we went to the lake that's right by their house to go fishing, and we caught three bluegill there. And we had a good time. And then just like it's been. Like riding around. You're just riding around, yeah. having a good time. Like just riding around on my bike and stuff, going places, just riding around on the Bronco, that type of stuff. That's cool. Well, uh, you're obviously having fun and you're doing the outdoor stuff. So that uh, goes right along with the Bronco Wild Outdoors. And, you know, who knows what the future holds for the channel, but outdoors will probably be a big, big part of it, right? All right, Dave with All Terrain Nation, thank you very much for that $5 super chat. I greatly, we greatly appreciate that. And look, we are on a mission to hit 3,000 subs by the um, beginning of next week, I think Monday. Um, it's a big task, but I think we can do it. So if you're checking us out now live uh, or in replay, whenever it is, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, in exchange for that, we're trying to give you as much cool, cool content as like tonight, talking about the Bronco Raptor, I'm trying to give a review without actually driving one. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. See how that and works out. All Terrain Nation, thank you for the five dollar dono. Um, it said I or I challenge y'all to help support our channel. It said, it said I challenge y'all to help. The, the channel, channel tonight. tonight, and I definitely appreciate that. <laughs> definitely. Um, Let's see. Let's go back to the nurse AJ. Hey, what is going on? Um, yeah, Raptor talk. I have some. I have some cool info tonight. Some of it's redundant from a video that I dropped last week. Uh, I think the title was uh, "Secrets Under the Hood" or something like that. Um, and a little bit of redundancy there, but some other stuff too. And I'm noticing the the reviews on other channels, Gavin. And you and I watched a couple today. And, you know, they're good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not, you know, knocking them or anything at all, but there, there's a lot of the same stuff and a little bit of nuances there. And the one thing that I'm picking up from each of the reviews, there's a common thread and Gavin, you'll want to know what that is. So let's go through the list here. Dirk Connor, what is going on, my friend? Thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, Hi, hello. Um, hello. Good evening. And, um, Four high, four low. Here, you, why don't you scroll and say hello to everyone? So I'm going in sixty. Hello, all terrain nation. Thank or er, um, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for everybody to for tuning in. And hey, John Burnett. Hello, neighbors. Good day. Hey, Gavin. What's up, dude? Hello, and all terrain nation. Thank you for that five dollar super chat. Um, overlanding for fun. What is up? Nick Kefton, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. I'm sorry if I am. But um, Nick has the uh, early Broncos working yeah. on. Yeah. Hello. Um, um, howdy, Bronco78. Um, thanks for that comment. Um, Alter Nation, smash the light. And <laughs> Nick, I'll be. I'll take the Raptor in Velocity Blue. <laughs> I like that color. Too. Um, and yeah. John Burnett um, with a four, $5 um, Super Chat challenge accepted. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dave getting it rolling there. We greatly appreciate the Super Chats as always. So, Gavin, tonight we're going to jump right into the Bron uh, Bronco Raptor content. And I think there's some cool stuff there to talk about. Um, on the reviews, the one thing that I've noticed that 
they'll, I think most Bronco Raptor buyers understand this about the Bronco Raptor, or at least about Raptor in general. Mm-hmm. It's it's a different riding vehicle, especially on the road. So Nick ha- is redoing, I'm guessing, a 19- 1970. 1970 um, Ford Bronco. So on, on the, um, yeah, scroll up. You keep the comments going. Or other way. Um, so on the road, there, there's a, I think a common thread that I'm seeing, Gavin, everybody on these reviews, and they're saying that, well, you know, it's a little spongy, you know, around corners and, and things like that, but it's the nature of the suspension, Gavin. And I predict someone that doesn't really know what they're buying, right, in anticipation, is going to complain. They don't like the way it drives. It's, you know, whatever. But I think most people buying the Bronco Raptor get it. It's things like a giant four-wheeler, right? It's pretty heavy too. I think it's, uh, I don't have the exact weight in front of me, but maybe mid 5k somewhere in there, 5,500 to 5,800 pounds, something like that. Somebody, if you know the actual weight, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's on the heavier end, Yeah. but because of the 37 inch tires, the big side walls, the suspension, the Fox live uh, valve suspension, which is awesome. I'm going to try to hit on that a little bit tonight. Um, you, you know, the, the, with the travel of the suspension, which is not consistent, by the way, the computer's determining with the live valve, how much travel or how the suspension reacts to the terrain that you're on, which is really cool. So it's not just this static thing. Um, but I, you know, the, someone is not going to like how it drives on the road at period. But I think most people, like I said, they get it. It's a Baja. It's an off-road runner. It's made to hit these big bumps with the jounce bumpers. Uh, and you know, we're doing a video on the chassis. You've seen all the, the blue and yellow parts on the chassis, right? Yeah. And they represent different things. Either the parts that are same that are different. Blue was represented new parts or completely changed like taller shock towers and reinforcement <clears throat> in the frame on a different hitch. Um, but I, I think the common thread here is that driving on the road, it's a, you know, the, there's a lot of movement. Like when you hit the brakes, you see the front go down, it comes back up. All of that reminds me of a really, really awesome four wheeler. So yeah. I can't wait to really and Dr. enjoy Detroit, it. Detroit, I didn't like the ride at first on the freeway, but put in, but put it in sport mode and it tightened up. After a week, I miss it. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bronco seventy eight said, "Too many people will be expecting to handle, um." To handle like a standard Bronco. Uh, exactly right. Great. Two great comments, one right after another. So Dr. Detroit would know because he's actually had the luxury of driving one of these and not just, you know, off road, but on the road. And, and that's, that's, that's telling there. And the, one of the things I'm seeing from people that are lucky enough to review the Bronco, you know, they last week was the Bronco media week, I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of, of those comments. So it must be something there. I mean, not every person that reviews on a a vehicle or they're consistent. Right. But that's the one thing, the common thread I seem to get. Nick, I think everyone's with you on that one and the whole Ford community. Yeah. You want to drive one? (laughs) Community. You think I want to try driving one. Yeah. So think about this, Gavin, if you, you have a vehicle like that with that type of suspension, it is made to handle the rough terrain, high speeds and be, you know, and to, uh, to react and to be very stable in that, in that regards. So, you know, the, if you want the comfort, you want something you can travel in and really comfortable in the seating and the suspension and everything, you know, a, a standard, standard Bronco. And I say standard, what they Ford calls the base program, but you know, that's be all of our, our trims um, everywhere from base, big Ben, Black Diamond, Outer Banks, uh, Wild Track, Badlands, you know, and I'm not a leap, first edition. I'm leaving everything out. Of course, first edition is one and done. Um, but, I, but I think that if that's the ride that you're looking for, the Bronco Raptor is not going to be for you. I mean, that's just the way it is. So, um, but in the other things in the comments, you know, yes, it's shiny, cool colors. Um, y- you know, the the seating, the bolstering in the seats, it's there, you know, that seems to be a common comment, but when you get into the nitty gritty of this thing, um, there's a few things missing. So let's go ahead and go to the slideshow and see what we got going on. Let me go ahead and add this right here. All right. So that's a pretty cool shot. Wouldn't you say, um, 
anytime you can have a, a Bronco or any vehicle in the air like that is pretty cool. But one of the things that the suspension anticipates is when you're driving, obviously this would be an exaggeration, but when you're driving in some pretty rough terrain, it's going to tighten up and it's going to adjust and react to the terrain that you're on. So you're not being beat to death and using the, uh, the jounce bumpers, which are there, they're there to help cushion the, uh, the ride and protect the suspension. Um, but the suspension shocks mainly are going to work with the challenge bumpers and, and it's going to try to, uh, it's going to try to, um, I think make the ride, the, if this makes any sense, the rough off-road ride a little bit smoother, but mainly a lot more adaptable. What do you think about that picture, Gavin? That's awesome. You like that? Yes. So let's go to the next one here. Now it's pretty cool. So imagine the door off, the the, the top off, and and you're out in, in the dust. You're having a good time in your 75 plus thousand or 70,000 plus Bronco. Um, do you know where I, I was priced in somewhere? Like, I think and it was we like didn't do carbon four six. Around, or, oh. Yeah. So no carbon fiber, uh, went around. marine grade vinyl, right? Upgraded to the code orange seatbelt. Oh, yeah. Wait, we did? Like mm -hmm. the actual black The orange strap? ones. The orange ones. Oh. Yeah, pretty cool, right? You like that? So about 76,000. So just, you know, keep in mind that starting at 70 is... I thought you told me around 74. I thought it was until mom corrected me. Okay. Um, let's see know. here. Let's go ahead and hit this one right here. All right. This is the one thing that this is going to be some redundant. If you saw my video, redundant information in my uh, Raptor secrets under the hood. So in front of the air intake here, which some people call that a snorkel. I just call it the air inlet. Uh, now that leads to the air box, which you see behind it there. A lot larger, by the way. Um if you notice the flat area, the troughs in the uh, in the valance, and I don't think the cursor is going to show up on here, but if you notice those slots in there, that is for when you're going through water, if you get water over into the grill, over the hood. It kind of acts as like a gutter. Exactly. Very good, man. And like it's tilted, like the, the area to the right of those little, of the actual air intake thing it it's slightly tilted towards that. Right. And so what happens and, and is the other side is. imagine water makes it between uh, the hood and the grill between that, that little gap that's there or you now see in your, in your standard Bronco two, three or two, seven, your actual air enters through the grill on the driver's side. And it makes it across that uh, front, um, uh, whatever you want to call it, that channeled off area below the hood and above the grill. It makes it across there and goes into the air inlet. Um, with the Bronco Raptor, it pulls from both sides. But imagine water came over on the passenger side, which is where this is, and you had a big gulp of water. You want some of that water diverted. And so that's what those slots on the bottom do. They divert water so the water is able to drop down, air passes over the top. And then you go through these, you know, you could call them um, air straighteners, but these dividers. And their job is to get the air going in the air box in an in an even as possible flow, breaking down some of the vortices and the all the stuff that slows air down. And so, um, so sorry, I didn't draw. Well, what I was going to say was Ford says that they've in, they've reduced the um, induction losses, meaning restriction and you know, whether it be the size of charge pipes or the amount of charge pipes we're going to talk about, or uh, turns and bends or filtering and anything like that, they've reduced that by fifty percent. I would imagine that one way they reduced that was by straightening the air. Yeah. And, you know, it's in my humble opinion that inside of a snorkel on the Everglades, um, if they're in that plenum, the larger area right before it turns flat, if they had if they had uh, straighteners or dividers in there, that would probably uh, yeah. greatly help and that as well. so Nick, Nick said, um, don't care much for the orange color. And then, um, and then, um, Overlanding for fun said at Nick, um, the orange adds plus 20 horsepower. Yeah. Jo and then Do Dr. Detroit said, lol. And John Burnett, where is the alternator located? I do not know. All right. That's a question for him. 
Yeah. So the alternator is probably, if I would imagine, the same location as the 2.7, because this is basically a 2.7 heavily modified. It would be passenger side, you know, of course, toward the lower uh, area versus a, a 2.3 driver side. And it is higher, even though it's not out of that 36 inch you know, uh, range there. Um, but think about where this air goes in. So I thought those uh, troughs in the bottom, as Gavin said, gutters, I thought those are pretty, pretty cool little ad there that I haven't seen on any of the reviews talked about. And of course, that's not the shiny stuff you drive around the neighborhood and things like that. I get that, but it is, it is that unique feature so far to Bronco Raptor. Yeah, it's not like, Hey, everybody just look at me, but it's like, it's right. not for show, it's for effectiveness. Well, someone asked me a few weeks ago, if, uh, or in the comments in that video, that if I thought th this would be on the Everglades, and at the time, I, you know, I was busy doing other stuff, but I I thought about it later and said, well, no, because the Everglades has a snorkel. So it's sort of a sealed, you know, it's pulling air from the top of the snorkel, and it's sealed where it comes through the fender, comes through the engine bay, into the air box. So it wouldn't have any of this at all you alleviate that by having the inlet up high, even though it's mainly for, for, for dust and dirt. Uh, but it does have that component of not allowing it to suck water there. Now, when you do get inside this ducting going to the air air box, there, there is the flap that we have in our base Broncos. Uh, I was literally about to ask this. Mm -hmm. this one has a flap. Yeah. So it's, this would be your primary, you know, I guess first defense against water uh, getting in there. And then the second would be that flap. And then quite frankly, at least in my Bronco, I'm not going to say all Broncos, but in mine, 2.7 Badlands, there is a small drain hole in the bottom of the air box. Yeah. So were you out in the garage whenever I pulled the filter and got all the sand out? Yeah. Okay. You remember what I said we were going to do when we changed filters to that box? No. Make sure that drain hole wasn't stopped up with dirt. Yeah. And Bronco Sunday, I said, um, I like the code, code orange F-150, but after that, I have sand, and then Bria said, but the orange seat belts is a little too much. I have not seen a picture of anything of them, so I would not know. Oh, and do you know um, I have a theory on why the horsepower is going to go up on the Bronco Raptor what? in a few weeks? I could be wrong. I have no idea. I've been, you know, I, I'm wrong probably more than I'm right, but I have a theory. You remember when the Bronco, the horsepower was first revealed in the 2.3 and 2.7? Remember the how the numbers we discovered later went up when they tested it or on 93 octane or high octane, in this case, 93 octane? Yeah. I, have, I have a suspicion that did they, the 418 number, they had to get the information out there. So between the, I think it's 418 horsepower and maybe 440 torque somewhere right in there. Um, was that, is that on 87 octane? And will that number go up? Will we get that? Hey, good news. If you use 93, then it goes up. Or was that 418 on 93? I guess that's something that we can uh, look forward to in the future. But if that's the case, roughly add 15 to 20 horsepower. Can you park? Hot Wheels cars in the air intake. Um, I will have to test that when we get the wrap. Yeah. Um, actually, just put a little slider in there so it co covers it up. And then, but if you <laughs> inhale it, all you're going to hear when you're going down the road is. Good job, Tim. It. Now, when the Bronc, the, when the wrapper won't crank up, I'll have to go check the uh, yeah, you might wanna... restriction in the airflow for some of his uh, Hot Wheels. And what do you have mostly? My Hot Wheels or Matchbox? Uh, well, Hot Wheels bought out Matchbox. So, so I'm just so old school. I still think there's two different companies, or are they technically the same? So mostly um, Matchbox. So mostly Hot Wheels, but also yeah. I, I'm looking at the comment. Uh, I'm going to six. Uh, Code Orange is a pretty cool color. Uh, it looks red until you get up close to it. I hear you. I hear they do something weird in the clear coat, and that gives it that that little thing there. Yeah, Code Orange, Nick. Um, it. It does add horsepower. It really does. So maybe if you have code orange seat belts, you've got 450 horsepower. Yep, the, or the orange is more aer aerodynamic. It is. Or orange is just like the color to go with, isn't it? So actually, we like the eruption green in Area 51. That's why we have both of those colors. But uh, but I've never seen a code orange. Uh, Overlanding for yeah. fun. Gavin is, he's... um. He likes high tech stuff. I do. He likes trying to figure 
stuff out. I wonder where he gets that from. Um, hey, by the way, did you know that the two point, well, the 3.0, which is a heavily modified 2.7, uh, they got rid of the hot gas recirculation. Did you know that? It's missing. The fuel high pressure fuel pump, which is located on our 2.7 on the passenger side in the rear of the engine, and it's driven, it's like a, you know, big arm in there and it's driven off of a exhaust lobe on the cam. It's now passenger side, this, you know, still the passenger side, but it's midway of the engine. So there's, there's some really cool changes that's happened to it. And I think that when you start to understand some of these, these changes here, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of cool for Bronco, right? Bronco talk, Bronco, extreme Bronco, right? Well, this would be an extreme Bronco, uh, the Bronco Raptor. But when you get into some of the small little features in it, it's pretty cool. The last thing about the 3.0 before I forget, or probably not last thing, but something before I forget, it's direct injection only. It is not dual injection like the 2.7. So the 2.3 is direct injection, the 3.0 is direct injection, and that leaves the 2.7 as the only one with direct and port injection or dual injection. So I thought that was pretty cool. Nurse AJ, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate that. Man, you guys are awesome tonight. I Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the super chats. We uh, heavily um, depend on those and appreciate it. And we, our next goal is 3,000 subs. And I think uh, we have some videos coming out later this week that ought to interest someone and quite a few people. And the 2.7 video will make its uh, debut again. <laughs> yeah, so, Nurse AJ, thank you for the $20. Yeah, that was very nice. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate that. And thanks for everyone tuning in tonight, by the way. Uh, right now we have 25 people tuning in and we greatly appreciate it. And that number goes up and down. I don't know how accurate that is at it the moment. It just goes like, well, it doesn't update as soon. It just goes like up and down, up and down. Because people all tune in, leave. Tune in, leave, 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 and then tune in, leave, tune in, leave. So, hey, like that, the branded Fox shocks on this live valve. Um, it's pretty cool that you have a shock that changes its resistance based on terrain. So, you might not be able to see that, that when it's light brown. Hmm. But. Well, actually, you're not going to be able to see it when it's covered in mud, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, this is, a, uh, this so is the rear, exhaust. obviously, rear shot. Dual exhaust. Yeah, I did see uh, someone had a review today and, uh, well, whenever they posted it, I saw it today and they said Ford lost uh, a good opportunity to show its true dual exhaust. I think that the reason why the exhaust is tucked up where it is, is for uh, departure, right? So as you're, so, as you're going off the hill, you, you know, you're so trying to going up, up um, or like um, approach, well, um, like angle and you hear drag in the back. So, and then you, uh, your whole exhaust pipe's dragging the floor as you go. So, right. So approach and departure, and that's one reason why it's held up tight. They've also installed. I saw uh, someone today, and I wish I could give them credit for it. I just can't remember. I watched so much today. Uh, a, they call it a beaver tail. I think it is. It's basically a flat piece of metal that's under the um, the seven pin tr uh, hitch. Uh, connector the seven and four pinch because i guess they were tearing those up so they added some support there but you'll see this dana 50 uh rear end here with ford performance axles uh the rear end housing is a lot thicker it's a lot more durable also you have the branded uh diff cover on the back um you have the little slots on the left hand side of it though they run horizontal that's just to help dissipate heat you know heat rut runs out of that thin metal and mixes with the air and that's just it's basically cooling fins uh, but you have the little branded R on the bottom right there. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see underneath the back dual exhaust Dana 50 uh, skid plates out of the uh, wazoo on this one. And let's see where else um, let's hit the next one here. All right. Cool shot. This picture looks a little funny. So um, don't worry about that. Now, you can't really tell from here, but another thing about the engine that, you know, the turbos have been said to, they're smaller. Now, I don't know if they're um, smaller or different. I, I don't know the part numbers, but I do know this. Apparently, the uh, turbine and the compressor wheels have both, both been redesigned to move more air. 
and in versus the two seven where you have the charge air pipe off the passenger side turbo and one off the driver's side, they meet at a Y fitting and they go into the charge air cooler as one pipe. Uh, the three O and the Raptor, the Bronco Raptor has two charge pipes that go into the charge air cooler or inner cooler, and then it leaves as one and goes through the throttle body. So definitely airflow in this engine, Gavin is critical. I mean, yeah. You know, there again, they've reduced the losses and they've re the um, the induction losses and they've reduced it by allowing more area or air to go freely <laughs> uh, into the engine. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Anything else under the hood, Mr. Gavin, no. that we see? Does it have the... So you have um, some of the diverters on the other side for the water, by the way. Does it have like the heater? The block heater? Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if that was an option or not. We didn't get it if it was. It's not an option. And another thing about the grill. Okay, so looking at the grill, I think we have a better picture here. Here we go. If you're in Baja, yeah, I don't think you'll need a you'll need a um, block heater. You'll need a block cooler. Yeah. Well, well. Speaking of that, that's another reason CGI is good. CGI is good for the tor uh, torsional. The twisting uh, that happens in blocks, if you really like torque one up um, and I, that's extreme, but it is a reason. So CGI is good for that. It's also good for cooling. Um, it has a better cooling effect. Uh, you know, some people say, well, aluminum cools off. Uh, aluminum, um, uh, aluminum exchanges heat really, really, really quick. And sometimes stabilization of heat in an engine is critical. Now that's my opinion. That's probably discounted by every other person that builds engines, but we always felt like we didn't want temperature extremes. We wanted to consistently keep an operating temperature in an engine. And so cast iron was all we did anyway. We were, we didn't have the money to do aluminum back in the day. Of course, now some engines you buy from the factory are aluminum. So it's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, but I want to talk about the grill. So you start off with the, the three little amber lights in the front and that's because 80 inches or, or wider, and it could be 79 or wider, but at least 80 inches and wider, you, you have to have these DOT approved lights. So looking at it from the front, you see the amber and from the rear, you see red. So in this case here, the, the three amber lights and then the ring and bar headlights. So you have the amber ring and bar headlights. So this thing definitely getting up behind you, going down the road, looking at in the mirror is pretty, pretty intimidating. Wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. And I'm going on 60. So I sold my first F-150 Raptor last night. I, you know, I saw that. I, I, we follow you, of course, on Instagram. And I saw that video, Antimatter Blue, I think it was. And yes, it does look black from a distance until you see it right up front. And Antimatter Blue is it. Yeah. Um, and how much should you get for it? Not, no, don't ask. Don't answer that. Oh, I'm just wondering. Dude. What? Dude. What? Dude. I, I'm uh, just wondering, like. You're right. What, 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 so what seriously, Gavin, right Gavin, look at this grill. So. That's what do you kind of like Batman. What do you what do you notice about the grill? First of all, um, it, it's like kind. It's a weird shaped hexagon instead of like circles. What is that? Ovals. Boom, 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 boom. F O R D. That's right. So the Ford scripts in the front. However, uh, Ford says that they were trying to get as much air in and sealed as possible now sealed so air doesn't just go through the grill and go wherever they were trying to drive it across the uh, coolers the radiator the inner cooler and drive it into the engine bay um and so the most free flowing the less surface area there so the big you know in between the f and the o especially in the d and then a little bit of the r you know you can get a lot of air just through there but then you see the slots above it and below it and, it, you know, there, there was a, it wasn't just a grill meant to fill a hole, right? So it's, it's, it's designed to move the air that's needed to keep this thing cool. And think about it. If you're rock crawling, you don't have the luxury uh, of, of outside air blowing across it. Uh, you're relying on the cooling fans to move enough air. And chances are you're rock crawling. If it's in the summer, you know, it's going to be hot. And so you have a lot of engine bay heat. So getting rid of the heat was critical, which we'll look at that in just a second. Um, but that code orange is sweet. Uh, it does. You see the fog lights in the front as well. So you have the fog lights that are uncovered. 
And then you have the off-road lights, which are covered, which are you know supposed to be covered when you're on the road and you uncover them when you go off-road. So that's fine. Um, I, I did hear today, and I haven't seen this, nothing official, that the recovery uh, points, the tow hooks on the front are uh, a little beefier, for lack of a better term, over a little over-engineered. Um, if that's the case, um, yeah, it would make sense, right? It's a heavier vehicle, so you have more to tow, Gavin. Um, and we do have a, a video coming out on the frame and suspension, which we're going to talk about upper and lower control arms, a little bit more about the Fox uh, shocks on there. Spring. Yeah, man, that's pretty cool. Um, here you go. Side by side comparison. What do you think? So this is a, um, what is that? That's, that's a wild track. See the painted mirrors. Mm -hmm. So that's a, the wild track on the left Sasquatch, obviously. Um, you know, you can see the side by side. So, and, and this picture probably doesn't do it justice. How, how much higher would you say that is two, three inches? Two to three inches. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Then the bash plate underneath is massive, considerably yeah. more visible and a lot are really big. Well, and I think the gray, the mm -hmm. either titanium or gray, whatever they want to call that, I think that really adds to that look in the front. Um, oh, it's definitely wider. Your yeah. your front fenders are are wider. Um, definitely. And they're not metal, by the way, or aluminum. They're plastic. They're a composite type material, yeah. and they did that. You know, they probably tried to lighten up this thing everywhere they could. All right, so this is pretty cool. I don't think I have a a shot under the hood. There may be a video floating around in my software here that we can pop up there. But so there's two types of hood vents here. Um, so you have, you have passive air vents and then you have forced, forced air vents, right? So if you think about the radiator fans, technically, if you wanted to split hairs, you could say, well, that's a, uh, you know, forced air coming into the engine bay. And of course, when you're driving, you get more of it, right? And you're getting to the engine bay. They wanted that heat to go somewhere. So underneath the hood, there's these squares cut. Now they're not huge. So when you see this big black part here, you think, well, wow, that's open underneath. It's only open below each one of the openings that you see from the top side. So it's not a massive hole there. You know, I'm sure some testing, aerodynamics, things like that went into it, but extracting a certain amount of heat's what they needed. In the fenders, you have sort of the, the shark gill looking things. And those are pretty cool. I think yeah. you said that. And, um, oh yeah. And so there's been some stuff going on in chat where it's, um, okay. So Nurse AJ said, Great. Thanks, Dwayne. I, I have an OBX Sasquatch. Now I want the rest. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, actually, I want to go back to some of these uh, comments here. And by the way, thanks for the comments. I haven't been following through. I wanted to get through this presentation and then go back through all of the comments. But there is a few in here that I really like. So, or actually quite a few. Now, one thing is a, a drivability. The other thing that I've noticed, and maybe Dr. Detroit could hit on this one, is that um, you have the, the trail sites that are on the fenders, which, you know, we, we have those, right. But I'm what tired. I'm, what I'm hearing is that you've really got to pay attention to the fender flares because this Bronco is almost 10 inches wider overall. And I think it has an eight, eight, eight inch, six inch, uh, 8.6 inch wider track on the rear and maybe a little bit uh, tighter in the front, maybe eight, four, something like that. But let's just say eight, six wider, uh, with overall, and the overall would definitely be mirrors and fender flares. Imagine a Bronco about 10, 10 inches. Overalls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, like the jean overall. All right, but anyways, before I go, um, Bronco 78. Um, oh, you have to go through the comments. We're almost done with the presentation. We're going to go through all the comments as soon as this is done here. So, you know, I say presentation. That's how I look at it. Basically, it's, it's, uh, yeah, these little pictures on the slide show okay. here. Enough air. So this is a upcoming thumbnail to a video that we're working on with the grill. Oh, you spoiled it. Uh, no, I wanted to spoil it. So we're back to the beginning there. Um, so the beginning. Yep. Nope. Yep, um, maybe and that's pretty cool. You just imagine taking the top off, the doors off, and just letting it rip. I mean, that would just be awesome. It's a, definitely a mean, mean looking vehicle. And look at the articulation on that. I've yeah. been watching some of these videos and I have been impressed with some of the rock crawling, even though, look, I'm not a rock crawler. Um, that's not our terrain here, 
Um, Tartrates, mud. Mud, sand, sand, and, you know, oil. small rocks, but nothing like this. Like gravel. Really. Yeah, more like gravel. Um, but, I mean, this would be something that we would be doing right here in the Outer Banks, right? Yeah. yeah. But because it, there's a lot of, like, hills that go into neighborhoods and people just fly. We don't, but people just fly over them. Now, this you we, can't we do. trucks and, like, yeah. This you but, can't do in the Outer Banks. <laughs> but, no, we see, like, trucks and, like, Subaru Outbacks and stuff That's, just flying up these hills. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of the dunes over there, you get to go up. It's pretty cool. And uh, this would be first in flight, I guess, right? That's the real reason why the lights are on it. And man, what a sweet looking ride. You know, I think the color does it. Um, I do I do know there's a lot of good comments about the black fender flares on white or uh, these on orange. I, You know, I get it. Black's the most popular color ordered from what I'm he um, hearing. And I guess if you just don't want that color, you know, that, all that contrasting of the, all that fender flare material in the paint, I, I guess that's uh, that's what you want to do. And what it's a nice view there. I also one of the common threads is when people reviewing these or driving them, saying that you know the it's hard to see through the rearview mirror um, because you have that thirty-seven inch tire, you have the wider third brake light, uh, so it sticks up into that rear glass a little bit more. Um, now, from the videos I saw, I could definitely drive it, not worried about it. And you have the backup camera, so, you, you know. And you could sit in the one at East. Yeah, we sat in it. I mean, it was, I mean, we sat in it, it and it was cool, but driving is. I could reach the pedals. I could see over the wheels. What do you think about that view there? Nice. So, I think they're calling it, is it the Bebo or something? The B-pillar cross member, it's aluminum and plastic uh, that runs just behind the driver's uh head there then the the uh, uh carbon fiber one that's in the c pillar in the back you know this top view here this bird's eye view here is it that really is just like that off-road toy right mm -hmm. i mean it's like you know i don't go catch some flack for it but it's like a giant it's like a giant uh four-wheeler but anyway let's get on back to the comp there you go well not like that but well no not falling that's right uh let's see here let's go back through the comments and i appreciate all the comments by the way tonight let's roll through here yeah nick said he wants to drive one yeah you and me both um i have to check the ford dealership here in town and see if they're getting any raptors in yeah you all too yeah our, our buddy uh our buddy doug i like how he says that he's got to get that raptor in this there is the all new 2022 Ford Bronco Rap. Yeah, he's a cool dude. We we definitely, we like uh, Doug. He's pretty cool. All right, let's see here. I'm going to 60. Uh, we already have that one at the plant. I guess it's going to be up close. I'm going to beg my coworker for a ride in it when she gets it. Yeah, you're going to have to, uh, definitely going to have to beg for there. Dr. Detroit said, I will admit the Badlands is enough Bronco for anyone, but this is next level for the desert. I am excited for it. Well, Tommy nailed it in the summary ATM podcast. You can't reproduce this vehicle. No, you can't. And if you want one, you've got to you've got to buy it from Ford, right? There's just the proprietary stuff that is either going to be not offered or it's going to be so expensive, uh, time consuming to do, or darn near impossible. Um, you know, the, the the fenders, for example. Now, some people don't like the fender flares, but the fenders and the quarters itself, you know, they're different. Right. And then you, of course, the cross member, somebody will make something like that. That's definitely aftermarket is coming with that. Um, and by the way, we do have an, a, um, a and, and don't tell them what it is yet because we have to keep it a surprise. But we have a manufacturer send us something they want us to try on our Bronco and uh, give them a give them a review on it. So we have that happening coming up really, really soon. I can't wait for that. Uh, let's see. And Nick say he doesn't care for the orange. Yeah, it's not for everyone. I mean, that's for certain. Yeah, Dr. Detroit had an ordered code orange, but wish I did Area 51. So I'm assuming you got, well, I don't know if you got your build date or not. I don't know if people feel comfortable changing stuff this late in the game. You know, we didn't, um, we didn't add the uh, um, graphics to ours. And I kind of, after seeing these reviews this week, that's the one thing that I've warmed up to is what it looks like with it. And I kind of wish I had it. What do you think? 
maybe it's a question for the dealer and just say, Hey, if they think it'll, you know, mess the deal up completely, if, uh, if that's a change that it's would, just like a little wrap piece. Though. Well, it's, yeah, but any right now, anything I is. Hitch can back you up two months or three, actually. That's yeah. Overlanding for fun said, uh, I didn't see this earlier. Nick, uh, Code Orange does add 20 horsepower. Yep, I hear you. Yep. The yeah, alternator, we talked about that. that. Uh, let's see. Um, Bronco 78 said, The Code Orange seat belts are a little much. You know, I figured, like, think about it. If you go out and buy that really cool off road vehicle, that four wheeler dirt bike, something like that, Gavin, what's it going to have in it? You know, you see the helmets, you see all the accessories that come with it. It's kind of loud, right? You know, and that's kind of what we're looking for. There's something a little bit different. Uh, John, uh, John said, I've seen some videos where the water hole too fast and the alternator went dead. Um, yeah, they went into the, they just drowned it, right? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's other parts that, someone said mud, right? Mud is a really a big deal. I haven't done that and I hope I at least with our Broncos, we're not into the deep mud stuff. Now, water's another story. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. But that's a good point. I haven't I haven't I heard just water. I just watering. heard mud. I want to go watering. Well, no, you want to be able to run it. I mean, we get hurricanes and nor'easters around here all the time. Now, I have no plans of driving through salt water. That, I'll guarantee it. But I what if? It's too bad on the bottom, like, like the salt on the road. What's well, bad on everything? Yeah. But what if we were stranded somewhere? We had to. Oh, oh we'll drive through it if we have to. But we'll I have zero desire to, I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see. Um, Nurse AJ, $20 uh, super chat. Thank you again for that. We definitely appreciate it. And there again, John and All Terrain, thank you for yours as well. Other than suspension upgrades, I'm most impressed by the anti lag feature in the Baja mode for. The... Yeah. So that, you know, is done differently with this one. This one's done by throttle bypass air, which I didn't mention earlier talking about the engine. It does hold the RPMs. Now, there's a time in there that if you aren't back mm -hmm. into the gas, it's going to drop the RPMs down a little bit. Uh, but what basically what it's doing is it helped keeping the uh, turbo spooled up so that you have more instant horsepower whenever mm -hmm. you're back on the gas. So that's definitely something that's um, definitely something that's a surprise there. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, they work well and feel the difference for sure. So yeah, man, tell, tell everyone goodbye. Mm -hmm. Good night, everyone, and hope you enjoy the stream, and um, look out for the videos that are coming, and there will definitely be more, and yeah. Are you going to do any more videos with me, or are you, like, permanently retired? Oh. I'm, I'm just videos. kidding. It's just You've been bailing on me. I know, no, no. You're... YouTube videos, I'm either, it's summer, so I'm either at I a get friend's it. house doing something. No, you need friend. to. You're either swimming, fishing, hanging out with a friend, or sleepover, and that's what being a kid's about in the yeah. summertime. So also golfing. You got my support. Oh, yeah, you are doing the golfing thing. Now. All right, buddy. See you. Good night. Bye. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh-oh. Gavin forgot something here. Uh, let's see. If you live, uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher said, if you live in a place where you can use the Raptors' capabilities on a regular basis, like the Southwest or High Sierra, it would be worth the extra 15. Yeah, it definitely isn't worth it in our area which sometimes I question them. Why the heck are we getting one? Um, I have no idea. It, it, the cool factor, I mean, you're driving down the road with it, right? That's a poor excuse, but you know, it's kind of cool, but it's good for channel content as well. And for those occasions that you get to take it somewhere and open it up, it's nice to have it. So, um, but I do agree with you. It is Definitely a vehicle that is better used in different regions than where we live here in the Southeast. So that is, uh, and Dr. Detroit said, yeah, it's worth what people will pay. That's right. You know, it's, it's, that's what it's all about. Um, and I think when you can get one at MSRP, you're, you're really scoring, you're doing, you're doing really good. And, and we haven't signed on ours yet, but that's what we're promised. So, if any uh, of my history with my dealer is any indication, then that's exactly what it'll be. They've been so good to us and uh, 
definitely for a long time, not just with the Bronco thing, but for years. So not worried about that one bit. Um, yeah. So I have seen some, I think orders, the rights to the order, however that's done legally, I don't even know how it's done, but sold on, I think it was eBay sold somewhere for maybe high one thirties, low one forties. That is just insane. If you ask me, and this is, I'm sure no money changes hands until it's here. Right. But that's the, I like, I, I, I don't know. That just blows my mind. Um, that there's that, that much in there and and they're going to build a limited supply of them. So, I mean, it is, it is going to be a rare vehicle. Um, and of course, first year, it's just like the GT 500. Now, I think I told you my story when I bought my 07 GT 500 back, I got it in July of 06. So it was an 07 red and white, great car. They were going to build 8,500. That's what we were told limited production, maybe a year, maybe two years. And now they're full blown race cars. Uh, I had 500 horsepower. Now they're 760, I think it is, plus. Uh, it's incredible. <laughs> so, no comparison. Where does the Bronco go in the future? Uh, just, I guess that just depends on who's driving energy policy, you know, and will the engines get ever get bigger or will they stay where they are or will they just turn into triple A's uh, batteries or something? Let's see. Um, Nurse AJ said, I just love to code orange. Uh, this thing is seriously cool. It is cool. And I just, you know, it's got that unique, that, that draw to it, right? That color, because it's so much, uh, it's so unusual. Um, one thing that kind of scared me about it is that it is a flat color, but, and I don't know this for certain, but one article picked up on this and they said there's something different in a clear coat that gives it that kind of uh, mystic paint kind of a look. Uh, but I don't know if that's true or not. Um, that was, you know, one person's comment. And until I read it like three or four different places, I start to question it. But but it sounds cool because it's not just an orange vehicle. It does have that kind of weirdness about it in a good way, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. And I, I think that if you if you're mainly go wheeling somewhere and you're going to take your let's just say 80,000 plus vehicle out into the woods, you're going to make sure that you're taking it out onto the wider trails. You know, the Bronco, the base Bronco is already wider than the Jeep. Um, and so if you think about some of these trails, these real narrow trails, right. And side by sides running down, I'm, I'm just not into scratching up the vehicle with trees. And I know, I know that's why we do a different type of wheeling, you know, Rock crawling is cool. We did it in Texas, a little bit in Texas off rodeo. And that was really great. And I got to learn how to, you know, approach some of the smaller terrain like that. I think Texas is probably closer, obviously closer to our terrain than say a Moab is completely different. It's like Mars, you know, um, I think Texas, I could see some of the stuff being here in Virginia, uh, so Texas was really good for us, but going to say Moab, for example, would just be that novelty, the coolness, say I did it type thing. It wouldn't be for a technique or be able to, you know, learn anything directly from my area, even though rock crawling to some level is learning a skill regardless of the size of rocks. But, you know, Moab's just a cool place to go to and say you did it. Uh, let's see. Um, Bronco 78 said, uh, use F-150 Raptors. 37s are going for 100 to 120,000. Man, that's just crazy. If you have a uh, expendable income, then you can be the cool kid on the block with nowhere to go. And that's about it. I mean, that's really, you can say you have one and, and that's it. Um, you know, it's a shame that the Outer Banks has a speed limit on the beach and they do enforce it because that would be really, really fun. Um, I think the top speed down there is, depends on what beach you're on is 35, uh, at least from what I know. Uh, but there has to be somewhere. I told Becky we need to just buy our 50 acres out in the country and create our own little own little park so we can go out and have our fun. Um, uh, let's see. Bronco 78, where are you? Okay, well, I, yeah, I know where he is. He's down in, um, down south there. Yeah, uh, compare the the Raptor to my 2000 Excursion, which is 
80 inches wide. Yeah, that is a big vehicle. Definitely a big vehicle. Yeah, Bronco 78s in North Georgia there. Hello, by the way. I sold my F-150 Raptor last night. We talked about that. I think Ford is way oversized. I like the size of the Bronco. Even the standard girl is perfect. Tim, overlanding for fun. Yeah, I think the... If you're looking at the Bron say the Badlands, right? Or any of the Broncos with the Bronco script in the grill, it's just clean looking, right? It looks good. But when it's when it's Raptor anything, it has to have the big Ford script. It has to have that huge grill. And for performance sakes, they want to make sure that they get enough air uh into the engine bay as well. Um let's see what we got. Nurse AJ, I'm just a girl, these rap. I'm just a girl, but these Raptors are getting, <laughs> yeah. Um, they get my love of cars. My dad used to 69 Roadrunner. Oh, 69 Roadrunner was a cool deal. And worked for Ford in Chicago assembly plant. Yeah, the, the Raptors bringing that, you know, that Shelby GT 350, Shelby GT 500 flair to the Bronco program, right? So what GT 500 is to Mustang, well, you know, it's, definitely uh definitely livening up the project and another thing to say you did it someone uh reviewed um someone reviewed the the bronco raptor and there again i'm sorry i cannot place all the comments and things i saw or heard with who did it it may have been tfl um but they basically said that in the beginning they were kind of you know maybe the horsepower was short uh, on the Raptor. No, it was Doug. Doug said this, Doug DeMira. He said that at first he was saying there was a huge difference between the horsepower, the projected 400 plus of the Bronco Raptor against the, uh, 392, um, Jeep, but with the 418 and after driving one, that there is a different feel. There's a performance. There is a horsepower to performance ratio, that is very cool. So I don't want to put words in his mouth. We'll go to his channel and watch his video. But he did a very good job of reviewing it. And he didn't do the off-road. He did on-road. Um, but he did a great job at reviewing it. Definitely go check out his channel for that. But um, I, th I think that's one of those things that it's kind of cool to hear people that, you know, saw early on production models and they had a, a, a you know, they couldn't drive it, but they could see all the details, talk to the engineers, but then actually get to drive it. And, and see the attitude has sort of geared toward, yeah, it is really cool. It is cool. They like the suspension. They like it on the road. Most people had kind of the comment. They liked it on the road, but they did feel better in say a, a Badlands Sasquatch or something like that. Um, you know, pretty cool just to see the different, different things in there. Not a lot of techie stuff, more driving Rock crawling, seeing what it'll do, articulation, things like that. I mean, obviously they got to drive them, but there's just not a lot of deep, deep diving. I don't know if Ford didn't want to talk about too much in the engines, transmissions. I think they would, but, you know, of course I would be plugging away at the 2.7, um, that the 3.0 is that heavily modified 2.7, which is nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, bigger bore, bigger stroke. It's a it's just a cool, cool engine in my opinion. And I've caught total, you know, heck over the last uh, couple of weeks about the two seven, but we're, we're going to follow it up with another video um, of our two Broncos with mileage on them. And I think you're going to like, it. it's going to be cool. I see uh, Nick. I don't, uh, I don't like the Ford grill. They should not have that on there. Yeah. You know, that's uh I don't know if it's 50 50 or what the ratio is, but some people like it and some don't. Um, you know, I like the Bronco grill better, but at the same time I get it, it's part of that program. So it is a little bit different. So, you know, not to just be in agreement with anything. I just, to me, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you ask me which grill, I would prefer one that said Bronco on it. Um, in my humble opinion, but, uh, the big Ford script written away, it does look good. And, that, and those will be aftermarket. You'll see those grills being made aftermarket somewhere very soon if they're not already there to be bought. <laughs> Let's see. Um, replied notifications off. Bring back the 90s. <laughs> It'd be worth losing everything. In there. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know if that's in relation to the just the the full size Bronco because you know if you say full size now, um, you get corrected very quick. It's mid size, but between the two Broncos, the Sport, it is the full size. But yeah, to bring a truly full full size Bronco back would would be interesting. Um, however, the market's got to drive it, and that's a lot of money to bring back because it couldn't be built at MAP. So in my from what I understand about map, I don't work there. I have no idea, but from what I understand, uh, which we're going to comment what about one more thing about the engine selection for the Bronco Raptor and why I think it's in there. A huge part of that. Um, nurse AJ said, thanks. Thanks Dwayne. I have an OBX Sasquatch. Now I want the Raptor. No, you've got a nice, you've got a nice vehicle there. A lot that, you know, the, the OBX, the Outer Banks trim is so popular in our area, and it's kind of funny when you go to the Outer Banks, you see a lot of Outer Banks trims there, right? I mean, it's just, I guess it just had to be that way. Um, but it's definitely more of that luxury feel, I think, um, out of all the trim levels, if you ask me. I'm going to 60 cent. I don't care if it's if it's a Raptor GT500 or Lightning. If you get an extra performance, I'm a fan. I hear you. You know, something other than just what every else is or every other thing is on the market, I should say. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to drive the, the basic little car. I, I don't know. It's something about my, um, and I don't need a vehicle to feel good about myself or anything, but it's like an expression, right? They look at someone's car and you kind of get an idea about, about them. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know with me, it's, it's, I like the cool feature. I like the cars. I like to, to go out and do the cool stuff off road. I like they have the option of when we go say to the outer banks, to the beach, you, you turn a knob, hit a couple buttons. You have to let the air out of your tires, you know, down to 20 or, or lower, but in our case, 20. And that's it. You, you just go have fun on the beach. You're not worried about getting stuck. At least we're not. Now, can you get stuck? Sure. Sure. It happens all the time, but not where we're going unless you do something like really bad, right? Really, really wrong. Oh, let's see here. All right, Nick, I guess you're splitting. You got to go. Uh, all train nation said, uh, let's go to Winrock next month. I might see if we can get out of here. Um, if we can do that, that would definitely be a possibility. I know I'd, that would, that would be like really cool stuff. You have, you have Texas happening, you have Windrock happening and yeah, definitely. I'd have to drive Becky's Bronco for that one. Though. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Flo, what's going on? I just saw your comment here. F2F terrain. What's happening. I appreciate all the comments tonight, everyone. Normally, you know, Becky started helping me go through the comments, keep them straight. Now it's just me and Gavin's bailed on me. So hang in there. Um, F2F terrain says, stay away from the mud. It's terrible. I do agree. It is, um, it is not good. Bronco 78 said the, the, the Raptor weighs more than the 78. Probably right. Um, Dr. Detroit said, mine will see the mall school drop off amid covered parking until Dave gets a hold of it. <laughs> I hear it. Then we'll see Windrock, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Let Dave send it. There you go. Oh, let's see. Let me send it. I just, an F2F train said, I just jumped my Sasquatch last weekend. Wow. Well, how did it do? Or how's it doing since then? Um. Yeah, F2F train said, uh, buy one at MSRP, the resale will be incredible. That is that is an exit strategy. Yep, it is a cool ride, Bronco 78 for sure. Uh, Flo, how many are going to be stolen from Ford's lot? Who knows? Who knows on that? I mean, I'm sure they have good uh, good security. At least I would hope so. Wow. News report said only I I mobile. I haven't seen anything about it. you're commented on the uh stuff being sold, and I have not seen any of that. I guess I need to do some more reading, huh? Bronco 78 said, uh were, were they production raptor test vehicles? Okay, so that's a comment going in here. I need to check up on that. Um 
John said, I'm going to off rodeo in New Hampshire next April for my birthday. I live in Tennessee. So I think the New Hampshire would be more close to my terrain. It is. And that's, you know, Becky and I, we wanted to go see some friends out in, um, um, you know, Nevada, but, um, New Hampshire is definitely more consistent with where we're at. So if you want to go to learn how to drive in your type of terrain, then I, I would definitely suggest New Hampshire. And now, of course, New Hampshire at this is seasonal. They close down in the winter from what I understand. So, um, yeah, we wanted to do that. We were actually going to do it this summer. And then Becky had the opportunity to go to Texas off rodeo with Kelly with ATN. And so I told her, Hey, go, we can schedule hours for later. Cause that's, you know, that's going to be a cool event for them to go enjoy that. So yeah, like, we'll schedule hours for later. Uh, let's see. Sorry, everyone. Hey, and I appreciate the comments by the way. And thanks for all the super chats. Those are awesome. I wanted to hit a couple more things on the Bronco uh, on the Bronco Raptor and the reviews that I've been seeing. And after I get through the comments, uh, Will. Dr. Detroit said, if you like the nimbleness of the 2.7, you'll love this one too. Good deal. Good deal. I can't wait to drive one. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think... Um, I think the Bronco, of course, barring any little bit of negative news that we've had, you know, recently, especially with, I guess, these articles that just get over and, you know, they just get pushed, pushed, pushing over and over and over again. And then you have people that don't really know anything about the Bronco commenting on them or the, the 2.7 EcoBoost. But um, I think all in all, the press has been really, really good. Uh, of course, then you get, I mean, <laughs> let me correct that a little bit other than the delays, but the delays are in everything. You know, I tell everybody in, in what I do for a living, we wait on stuff. We're waiting on stuff. Now we have stuff that, you know, is also being manufactured and we're noticing some stuff wrong that we've never seen before. So I'm wondering, you know, is it a people spread apart type thing, a QC thing, new employee thing? I have no idea what it is. So we're just, everyone's going through all the stuff. Uh, let's see. John said, I'm not sure how close you are to Arlington, Virginia, but I'm going Overland Expo East in October. You know what? I might just go to that. Um, Arrington, Arrington, Virginia. Um, anywhere in Virginia is no more than five hours or four hours from us. So maybe five hours. So yeah, I mean, I could definitely plan that and I'll look into that. That would be cool. I've been seeing the ones out West, but I think I'm headed out West a couple times this year and just trying to shorten that, you know, somewhere I can drive would be better. You know what I mean? Um, yep. But all terrain nation said, yeah, ladies going to Texas. Yeah. That, you know, that's going to be fun. Um, let's see. I told Becky, just learn how to rock crawl and learn how to use a GoPro. And that's all you got to do. Just film everything. We'll do all the editing when you get back. Um, but yeah, that's definitely going to be fun. And they get to go hang out with Shelby Hall, which is a cool feat, uh, uh, a cool experience for them by itself. And then get to go to drive the Bronco, see what it can do, learn what all the buttons are and just a cool experience there. So I can't wait. It's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, on the, the, now there again, I have no idea how map is run or anything about that, but I hear these little tidbits and when people talk about why the 3 well, really it's a 2 7 that's been, for lack, I'm sure there's more into it, but board and stroke to be, you know, a, to have a larger displacement, right? So it's a three liter. Um, I'm hearing these little tidbits about, well, it's the manufacturing also determined the engine. So it's built at map, it's set up a certain way that a, maybe a V8 wasn't a, an option there. Um, it because of the line, but a V8 brings in a whole set of other issues with it as well. But even like the three, five, maybe there's something about a three, five in that, you know, a two, seven or two, a two, three and a two, seven is what needs to be built there. I have no idea if that's the case or not, but I keep hearing these little comments where they're not saying that's it, but it's being dropped about manufacturing, about keeping the manufacturing in the, uh, to be able to build the Bronco Raptor, uh, the fender flares, you know, I, 
you know, I, I know people, you know, the fenders are different anyway, but I, I, it, it may be a situation where if they formed the fenders, so they come out as far right now as they do, or to at least to the track of the vehicle of the Bronco that it, it would affect something in the line. I have no idea. I just know that apparently it's very tight and some of the stuff has to be bolted on later. I mean, look at the height of it, the height of, for example, they have to, uh, the shock mounts have to be rotated. Um, so that it goes through kind of squatted a little bit. And then after it gets repositioned, the, the, uh, the shock mounting support, um, bracket, I forget what they call it. There's a particular name for it calls it, but it has to get relocated to the proper height. And, and that's for a height issue. So, you know, if width is an indication, you know, a couple inches higher is a big deal as well. So we'll leave that up to, you know, future, future things that come out. Um, uh, let's see. It runs down on smaller tires. Uh, haven't heard that. I've just heard that uh, it 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 they reposition the shock tires, but maybe it does. Maybe they run in on smaller tires and swap it out too. Totally possible. But I do know they have to reposition the shock mounts after it comes off the line. So that was um yeah Bron Bronco seventy eight uh, Carolina squat yeah from the factory. Uh, but yeah, it quickly you know, obviously when they roll it out at some point there it gets repositioned. And that was the only way that they could get it to go through with the top on it, of course. Well, it wouldn't matter if the top was on or not, top of the windshield still where it is. Um, but because of the 37s now, I, I mean, that would be interesting to find out if they run it through there on different tires because they said that the because of the 37s is why they had to relocate the shock mounts. I, I have no idea. Um, it would be interesting. I'd love to find out for sure. Uh, floor space is an issue. Dr. Detroit. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I would imagine, I mean, that place is not as plants go very big, is it? Um, and you know, and chips, I mean, chips are the, always seems to be the, the issue here with anything. So even when you build them, how long do they sit before they're able to ship out? Um, I've seen a lot of Broncos being delivered at least, you know, I'm seeing people, glad and posting about it <clears throat> on some of the forums where they're like, Hey, I've been waiting, 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 you know, and I'm seeing a lot of Broncos being delivered and, or just a lot more people commenting on it, but you have to figure for everyone that's on a forum, there's how many that aren't, you know, maybe is it a, is it a, uh, three to one ratio or something? I, I would have no idea. I haven't figured that out, but you know, the, the, the Bronco thing is still cool with us. We like it. Um, we're excited to be able to drive ours and do cool stuff with it. We do, uh, we're working right now on securing a campsite for Kevin and I to do the, the tent camping or car camping as they call it. Um, so that's going to be fun. Uh, we are definitely looking for some mountain kind of trails to go to. And I, I don't know if, I guess I can say this, I'm not going to say their name, but my, uh, my daughter Alexa plays on a softball a team and they just won the regional um, championship here. And so they go to the state championship and end of July. And so we're headed there to Luray, Virginia, uh, the end of July or sometime in July. I think it's the end. And that's going to be really cool. Um, that's going to definitely be fun. So maybe some trails because, you know, we can't, the, the games aren't all day. Right. So that's my excuse is, hey, after the game and they go back to the hotel, we can't hang out with them anyway. Let's go. Let's go wheeling somewhere around the Ray, Virginia. So we'll figure out something. Harrisonburg, stuff like that. So it's definitely going to be cool. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dave, for that. That's going to be cool. I, I can't wait to post some pictures. Uh, the it, It's kind of, it's kind of um, I guess it's good. There, there is a uh, a desire for people not to post a lot of stuff on social media about it, especially whenever they beat the defending state champion, because it, there just seems to be a riff and stuff like that. So we've kind of kept it quiet and everything, but hopefully we can start to congratulate her, you know, to let all of our friends know that we don't get to talk to her every day in case they want to support her and, and uh, all that good stuff. So um, I get to go help sell stuff for fundraising outside of grocery stores. So wish me luck. Um, I like selling stuff too. I don't mind. Uh, see, I would if they would finish. Um,
Yeah. Uh, John, I, I think you're talking about finishing. Yeah. I just, I just think if the chip thing could be secured and the tops are flowing, then I think that would dramatically reduce the backlog. I mean, what a problem to have though, right? You have that backlog, but at the same time you have to manage that. Um, and I think maybe that starts at dealers when the orders are taken. Like I don't know how it's going to be done in August, but expectations I think are better controlled when they're set initially um, so that, you, you know, people understand in the beginning what to expect. And of course that what to expect is changes, changes with what's going on in the world, but you know, you're not going to get it next month. So just hang in there. And I, I think that is uh I think that's definitely one thing that if I had anything to do with it, I would definitely set expectations to the reality of where we're at. But then again, wash machines for Pete's sakes. Um, you know, you can't, there's one day, this, uh, the big box stores are good on them and the next day they're out again. It's like, geez. So you have a house built, but no washer and dryer. Okay, great. So, you know, until the small stuff is taken care of, I can't imagine something like this, you know, so I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm a little bit different. I think that I have, I have a little bit more compassion for it because I, I see it in some of the smallest, craziest little things that we deal with on a daily basis. So I would imagine the high tech stuff is out there. Um, but anyway, I think Ford made a big mistake by making other Broncos without filling previous orders. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, let's see. Yeah, and Dr. Detroit and Alternation, thanks for saying that. That is awesome. Yeah, they're they're excited. My daughter is uh you, you know, she's of course she's nervous, right? But the coach has been there quite a few times and he's like, hey, nope, no worries, we're good. Let's go have fun. Um Gotcha. Dr. Detroit said something. I didn't catch this earlier. The platform for the Bronco would also need to be refitted and that would come in mass production. That would have to change for mass production. Yeah. There's nothing easy about changing something like that on an, uh, in a vehicle, you know, adding, a adding, a, a you know, a, a V8 sounds great and someone's going to do it if they haven't already. Um, but you know, mass production and reliability and, consistency in the trim or in the vehicle that they're building. I think, you know, and look, let's face it. We're not in an environment right now to where uh, gas engines are liked anyway, you know, gas is being run up so that uh, it, it matches EV. Um, and so it makes it, you know, then a, a harder choice for some people to make, but we'll see. I mean, who knows what the future holds, you know, with the fuel and things like that. And, I remember in 08, 2009, uh, you know, big SUVs. I don't know what the rates were, but they the sales dropped off trucks. And then look, they've made a roaring comeback. And of course, technology has helped with that too, better gas mileage and things like that. So, um, but hey, we are going to wrap this up for tonight. I have been going not too long here, but any other questions or comments before we wrap this thing up? Um, and if you haven't already, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you're watching right now, like I said, live or watching in the replay, hit that subscribe button. If you would, we're trying to get to that 3000 mark in a hurry. And to do that, we want to exchange that with some really good content. So we have some cool stuff coming, including a really cool product review that I think you're going to like. I'm literally waiting for it to show up. It's not here yet. And I'm actually excited for this. Uh, we have a couple different things going, but this one I'm really excited for. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, we are going to do a comparison video between our two Badlands. Um, you know, I saw uh, there was an article last week talking about the sway bar that was added for 22. I think we mentioned that back in January when we took uh, delivery of our, um, when we took delivery of our 22 Badlands. And did you see what happened here? And there's some other things in there too that we haven't really talked about. Um, we haven't really talked about the changes between 21 and 22 and some of the smallest things. Um, it would be interesting if we could duplicate the driving experience of a 21 and a 22 um, with that rear sway bar added to see if there's a difference. But there's other features as well. Uh, something about the seats, even though they're technically the same, 
uh, part numbers and everything. Becky says, hey, there's just something about the 21 to 22. So our video is going to try to compare that. We've talked about it in the past. We want to try to compare side by side the two different Broncos and how they uh, feel driving them and, um, and any changes that are there. So it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, so watch out for some cool videos this week. And we're going to actually get the ghosts in places here coming up really soon. Um, probably with softball happening now, a little bit less in, G uh, in July, uh, but definitely August is going to be a month full of traveling, but we are going to get some stuff done, uh, with camping here coming up real soon. So, um, hope you like the, uh, the Raptor content for tonight. I know I've kept this on the screen all night long. Um, but I definitely appreciate every one of you checking us out tonight. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, hit us up on Instagram, uh, Bronco Wild Outdoors. Shoot me a message or comment on something there. Uh, you can also comment on this video. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for all the super chats tonight. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Hit the like button if you don't mind and subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday night. See ya. Bye.